You happy? Yep, thank you. All right, we'll bring the meeting to order at whatever time it says. Um, start with the road report. I talked to Rodney on the oh, telephone today. I hope you did. Yep. I didn't. Um, things are going well. <laughs> he went to the doctors yeah. on the 18th, and yeah. the doctor said he'd like him to stay out of work another month, but Rodney doesn't want to. So he says he thinks he's fit to come back next Monday or Tuesday, whatever the 30th is. For light duty. For light duty, yeah. Just to okay. kind of ride around. And, and uh, I told him to um, use his own judgment on what he should do. And and I thought it would be fine. We should, um, I don't know if we have to make a motion, but we have to have it reflect in the minutes that we are accepting him back at uh, oh, limited okay. capacity. Well, then I'd make the motion we accept. Rodney back on the 30th. That's what he said. I don't know. About that. Yeah. Yeah, 30th is Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, For light duty. Yeah. All right. I second that. All right. I third it. Unanimous. <clears throat> so, anyway, he's coming back. He said he's feeling good and things are going well. Good. Um, second thing was he's still searching for a truck that we already ordered for the four wheel drive. They're still having issues with that. Um, he said Kenworth doesn't even make a four-wheel drive. Um, International so, does. So the freight liner, he can't even get what he wants? He can't get what he wants because in order to get what he, a truck that will, uh, that will accept the home, it has to be five feet longer. Five feet? Yeah. I don't know why, but he said five feet. Hmm. And so that seems unacceptable to him. It just seems foolish. So he checked with International or um, whatever they call it now up in Underhill. And they said they could do it, but it would be two years from now before they could deliver. Um, and the other thing he was, that I think that the Freightliner offered was a hydraulic. Yeah. Drive. Yeah. Um, that, I looked up a little bit on that. that interest me a lot yeah so um, he's, he's going to look into it more a lot more than you know the mechanical one yeah so that might be an option i don't know what it costs or anything so we're still in process on the truck okay um there is an estimate on the table there um from a dealership about a truck i don't know if that's what you're talking about can't be the right one because it's awful cheap <laughs> maybe it's just the front end of the <laughs> oh, hydraulic all wheel drive. Yeah. What's it say? Um, total of 40,000. Just for the front but, end. But what was the other one? The other one was. It was a lot because you, yes. you did the, the breakdown on it. it yeah. was, like, the, like just the transmission was 20,000 or the Yeah, but the front end was like 20 something. Yeah. So, so maybe that ain't that bad. Well, I think we ought to look into the reliability and, and, and just the usability and all that stuff before we jump on it, anyways. Any more to add on that subject? Um, has performance software upgrade with hill hold? Oh, that's I can't me. I can't imagine anything going wrong with that. Yeah. Well, that's what scares me is just the computerization that it just won't be good. Yeah, but I, I still think that might be better than that. Yeah, camp. oh yeah. That might be the only option, really. Right. Um, they're still grading roads. Yep. They're, they're getting toward the tail end of the first time around. Um, and all the equipment is going well. He, let's see, he had to get a new walking beam bushing or something for Larry's truck, the 10 wheeler. But they were going to, I think, change that themselves. But I don't, I didn't ask him that. Mm -hmm. um, he's talked to Larry Pickett. Maybe we mentioned it last time. Yeah. And, and the price of sand is going to stay the same. Really? Um, There's a sand quote right there, too. All right. Pick it right here. <clears throat> and he's looking at right now at lining up the six trucks to haul yeah, sand yeah. because even if he doesn't do it till August or whatever, if he wants to get ahead of it. <clears throat> So 
So it's what, 12 dollars a yard? Yeah. And he said if he hauls it, it's 19. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Oh. He brought a tire. I didn't realize that my tire was in. Yeah. Fred's getting punchy. He's got a fake spare tire. <laughs> 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 you walk nice. in there. <laughs> um, surcharge. Have, have you heard much about the price of fuel this summer? No, it's been dropping some, but I haven't heard any more things. Yeah. Well, it'd be good if you didn't have to have a fuel surcharge. Yeah. All right. So that's sand um, grading. Um, the one thing I want to reflect in the minutes is I was talking to Larry yesterday when he was grading or when he stopped when I walked by at the farm and he said he just celebrated his 29th anniversary working for the town. Really? Yep. And I'd like the minutes to reflect that I appreciate that. Wow. Okay. He's, at the time he's our longest serving employee. Really? Yep. I mean wow. Rodney came in after that. Yeah. And I just not been much after though. Not not too much, no. I think maybe well, Larry was in the springtime, and I think Rodney was in the fall or, or early winter. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! But I just really appreciate cool. yep. employees. So yeah, we ought to have his name in bold print. Bold print. Yeah. <clears throat> Jerry, yeah, Mike, we should we should have Mariah make a note, and then next year's town meeting, if it's thirty years, essentially, we should we should have yeah. a little a little toast to him there at town meeting. Yeah. And you know, whatever the thirty year anniversary of the gold, out of gold watch or something, but right, maybe Mariah can make cupcakes, gold <laughs> bushings. We'll see. She snapped her head right around. Yeah. Um, I think that was all we had, other than things are going pretty well. Good. So that's the end of the road report. Unless anybody has any I questions, hear it. We'll check that off. Um, why are you fellas here? Because you're not on the agenda. We're not on the agenda? Yeah. Oh, you told us. So, <laughs> I, so that means you're out of here. <laughs> okay. Um, will state my name and all that? But no, no. Not, not yet, but I just. Oh, okay. Because uh, of issues at our uh, transfer station. Okay. Well, um, maybe we'll. I'm trying to think of what to do next. It says legal go on, trails. Go on, do the legal trails. Yeah, because I assume that. you're here. Something to do with legal trails, or you just I'm curious. Yeah. You know what? I'm just curious about that agenda. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, so let's go to legal trails next, and maybe we'll get you after that. That's fine. Okay. So Jonathan Bicknell is there. So maybe Jonathan has something to start with. Um. What would you what would you like me to start with? I don't remember if we tasked you with something last time. Oh, or not. so yeah. So the last the last meeting, um, you did ask us to look at um, trails on private landowner property and how to oh, approach didn't you, that. Didn't you send an email about that? Yep. Or... Yeah. So I sent you. So what I sent you is feedback on public private trail agreements, um, and essentially there's three um three items that i put in the email one was the mike ahead approach in stratford right for the yep. network of trails um essentially no agreement you know he he gives a you know a, uh, a trails guideline um and highlights the the limited liability for a landowner with the statute that was uh, quoted in that in that document um, and he believes that you know any landowner that requires a, a an official agreement is not the right fit, right? That's his approach. And he's again, he's got a very expansive and successful network in Stratford. So that's that's one side, right? The other side is the vast approach. I sent you the agreement that they have. Obviously, they've been doing this for a long time. Um, I, I haven't seen the VASA agreement, but I sent you the vast agreement. Um, and so they again, they 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 note the the liability, limited liability for landowners. They they do mention the commitment to you know provide 
defense against the claim. And then they also, a third item is the liability insurance related to maintenance and grooming, okay, claims. And then I took a third step and I reached out to Vermont leagues, the cities and towns, right? I thought it would be prudent to do that. Um, and I, I sent you the responses from them. Uh, it was kind of a back and forth, but I summarized it in a document. And they, they also provided some additional resources um, in their, from their newsletter. It's a recreational trails worth the risk uh, newsletter. Um, there is 10 million in, in liability limit, uh, which is subject to coverage agreements, conditions, and exclusions. And I provided a resource limited in risk on public trails. And you know, part of the discussions that I didn't capture in the in the um, the summary, there's been a, a number of events recently in Vermont where there has been some casualties, right? So there's definitely a focus and a conversation on that. So um, they they do recommend um, an agreement, and they're happy to review it in the case of private landowners. Um, and we also may want to talk about how we approach town, the town forest as well, right? So there's there's a few things. One one other area, when I talk to the loss control person, they also comment on a waiver related to volunteers. So if you have someone who wants to use a chainsaw to clean up a trail, we may want to consider how we approach volunteers as well. So. Hmm. That's what I got. All right. Well, thank you. Welcome. <clears throat> Jonathan, did, did it come up, especially for VAST, and I guess for, for the other two, um, for HEB and VLCT, about what input the, the private landowners have as far as access to those trails, like who gets to use them? And then how much the municipality or the or the the yeah. organization like vast in this case or maybe right. Mike Mike Hebb has maybe it's you know the Stratford Trail Committee or something like that. So, so you mean um, recreational users? Like who's who's who decides? Yeah. You know if it's pedestrian only, if it's bikes, if it's horses, if it's dirt bikes, right. uh, and how that sort of tension or challenge is is met yeah i mean for um for mike cabby has sort of a broad approach i think he he allows um non-motorized recreation doesn't allow horseback riding so i think he's got a broad approach obviously vast is focused on snow machines right so uh vlct um they would obviously uh welcome you know details on you know a map of the land what you know the type of recreational use um to include those details in the agreement right because i thought it was interesting that we learned in in our, our committee that vast there's that agreement between the, the landowner and and vast as far as snow machines on these trails but yep. the private landowner has the final say on non-snow machine use, right. both you know, cross-country skiers, walkers, snowshoers, right. et cetera, but also off season who can use those the, the yeah. sort of dormant trails. Yeah. 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 I'm not I'm, I'm not aware of those details. So. And I didn't like my tabs, are those are those trails open year round? Uh, yes, I believe they are. Um, obviously, he'll close them based on conditions, right? But it's it's um, I, they have a website for notification, right? So uh, you can see certain trails that are closed currently, even though even if they're on the map. And is that a not for profit? I mean, we say my cat, but it's he he mentions the he either mentions the conservation. Commission or the Planning Commission in this document, but it's huh. it, it's it's I would say it's very much my cab. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my my feeling. So. Right. 
Yeah. And as far as, I mean, it's, there's no written agreement, but there's definitely like a handshake because he has to go to landowners and say, is it okay if the yeah. cross, cross town? Yeah. And he does landowner. a really, he does a really good job, you know, relationally, right? So he, he has the document. Um, he, he, he weeds out anyone who's not a right fit, right? Um, but he always publicly thanks them. I think it's in the, might even be in the town report. I don't, I can't remember if it's in the town report or some public document. So it does a good job. Yeah. And I think John Echevera has experienced this with Mike as well in the past. So, yeah. Yes, John sitting right here. I was just going to add that um, I think it's a, sort of like with VAST that, um, that Mike has certain policies, no, no electric bicycles, no horses, preferably no bicycles at all. Uh, um, but, um, but also it's up to, it's ultimately up to the landowners and you know, the landowners could say, you know, I, I'm, I'm good with a pogo stick trail, but that, that, would, that would be it. And Mike said, well, we've really got a small audience for that. So we're never mind. Just me, you know, we, we'll, we'll skip that. But, um, um, you know, I think that there, there are different restrictions on different parts of the Stratford trail system, according to the preferences of the landowners. Yeah. And I think I'm just assuming a lot here, but <clears throat> I heard that like Vast doesn't allow that their trails aren't open before December 15th, isn't it? Yeah. And then it's April 1st April, or April 15th, one April or the other. 15th, I think. Um, and so, but they also play it close them in there's no snow, snow. Right. right. But my right. point is, in the off season, they have nothing to do with the trails. Right. Um, so anybody can go on their trails, but it's not sanctioned by Vast. Right. Right. Yeah, the signs seem to go up pretty quick, right? No motorized vehicles on the vast trail that I've seen around town, right? Right. Yeah, back I don't to know who puts those up, whether it's the private landowners or vast. I don't. I don't know the answer. It's Baxter Doty. He does a really good job of that. Probably is Baxter. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Jonathan. That's informative. Yeah, you're welcome. And another thing I wanted to to kind of forge ahead on was the Falls Hill legal trail that we. Or I or we or whatever promised. Oh, I was going to bring my book. I forgot. I promised Hemingway that we would, I don't know about resolve it by this time of year, but at least be on the road to resolving that issue. And um, I don't know how close we are to that. But, but there again, I don't remember, Jonathan, did we task you or your committee with coming to some sort of resolution or suggestion to the select board about that? Yeah, so our, our scope, our scope uh, was simply to look at private public agreements, right, for now. And yeah. um, I would say we had a discussion in the Trails Committee, want to offer these few examples, and I would, I would lean towards an agreement that gets uh, um, reviewed by VLCT, right? And yes. Happy to, help, happy to help with that. Yeah. And I was thinking... My personal thoughts are that it seems like we're going to get, if we try to throw up or discontinue the Falls Hill legal trail, which Mr. Hemingway wants, uh, we're going to get some pushback from certain people that, that want to stay at, keep it a legal trail. And so maybe to simplify it, it might be a good idea to, to, to keep the legal trail and then just add a, have a private trail lead from his, the end of the legal trail onto the the angel of land and all the way down to Kelsey Mountain, some sort of a combination public private trail. And I personally would, would rather have it not go year to year, but have some like a 10 year process or something. And then at least some stability to it. You're gonna know at least for 10 years or five years or whatever that you're gonna have that available. That's my opinion. Anybody else got an opinion? Mike, when you talked to the angels, did they seem open to four season recreation on those vast trails on their land? Yeah. Yeah. Um, at, at that time, we were talking about getting permission every year. Yeah. Just like vast. And so that's what I mentioned to him, but um, 
I don't know that he would have a problem if we went five years or something. I don't know that, but I don't think he would. Jonathan, do you know if- And I think he wants non-motorized also. Yeah, right. Do you know if Mike have it, does he pretty much talk every year to the landowners on his trail network or is it is it more open-ended like once you agree let me know if you you know if the land sells or if you all of a sudden have a change of mind yeah I, my sense is is he just for relational purposes he'll he'll connect with every landowner um not to have, you know not to have something signed obviously but just to to have that relation and i think he's really careful about um areas that have uh potential to change right um relate he'll never be on a vast trail he'll 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 tend not to do that he'll be outside of a vast trail so and they don't do they use does that trail system use any class four or legal trails in stratford i bet they do i don't know off the top of my head i have a feeling they do but I have to look at the map. Yeah. Well, that was, you know, the other thing I was thinking about, which may have come up in, in those long discussions with the planning commission, in, you know, in the last couple of years was what, as far as access goes on a class four road, I, I guess municipalities, you know, have some say, but but they're essentially roads and roads are open to <clears throat> motorized vehicles unless they're posted, right? Right. Whereas legal trails, I don't know if they drag those same sort of, of options with them. You know, it seems like they're not, because I mean, class four roads have a maintenance schedule. They need to somewhat, you know, be open. Whereas class four, I mean, whereas legal trails, you know, don't have a maintenance schedule. So I just wondered if, and I know we've talked a lot about, you know, where class four roads stop and legal trails begin as far as landowner sort of privileges on those or, or municipal rights on those. But I wondered if, you know, if our, does Tunbridge have the ability to, to say, we only want, you know, walkers on our class four roads, that seems a stretch. Right. I think you clearly can. Yes, yeah. that's mm -hmm. <clears throat> restricted in that way. Or pogo, pogo sticks. Yeah. Can yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, John, I should read it. Go ahead. I don't want to interrupt this. But, uh, on Cal's proposal, you know, I think, you know, his, his argument is, is um, there's, a, there's a trail, but the trail is defective because it was not created with proper notice and a proper survey. And so he says, I'm entitled to have it taken off the, off the map. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to be a good guy. Um, and I don't want... Mm -hmm. But I don't want the unlimited designation of uses that go with a trail. Uh, and I don't want a trail to nowhere going into my property because a trail to nowhere ends up being a trail all the way through my property. So what he said is throw up the legal trail right? and I'll give you a mm -hmm. substitute for that and the rest of the way to angels, a permanent deeded, you know, in perpetuity yeah. public right of way <clears throat> um, that you know, would be limited to pedestrian activity. Which um, you know, I, I can understand why people you know never want to give up a right of public right of way or want to give up a trail, but they're getting double the amount of public right of way. I mean, it would be a deed held by the town to a right of way all the way from one end of Cal Hemenoy's property to another. Now, whether that's that's a good end, you know, I understand that those are not all the uses that people want, but it's a bigger right of way. Um, and you know, I mean, what his his case is that since I'm since I'm entitled, I have no trail on my property. I think it's a generous of me to offer a right of way all the way across my property. Mm -hmm. What's the bargaining chip on his point? I guess his bargaining chip is that 
is they're going to have another lawsuit to get the to get the class four the false hill trail declared invalid. I don't know. I'm interested in doing that, but but no. Uh, a lawyer. I mean, I think Paul Gillis has written that he's. As I understand it, he said that Cal Hemingway is probably right that there was no notice. Cal never got notice. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a survey. It wasn't an invalid ancient road designation, and so it's a bum trail. Yeah. So the town's got a, something on the on the books, but it's a bum trail. And so the question is, you know, where do you go from there? And Cal's come forward with a a practical solution. Now, ideally. You could convince Angel to put it, had granted or sell or give a deeded right of way all the way over to East Randolph. He might, I don't know why, he might, he might know, he might understandably not want to do that. Right. But even if he doesn't want to do that, he, he just want to, wants to sort of do a mic head handshake, I'll let people go through. It would be beneficial to the public to have a deeded right of way all the way across. Um, uh, Cal Hemingway's land. Right. Well, we're nowhere near the end of this discussion, but I hope we're more more than halfway. <laughs> well, I do. So, um, I don't know if Cal Hemingway watches these videos or not, but maybe we ought to at least have Mariah send him a note or something about that we're we're still in process. We aren't just sitting on our hands. So Mariah gives us a thumbs up. Oh, I see chewing. Got a piece of gum in her mouth. Cheese. Chips. Oh, Chips. Man. It's bad. Well, the, the other issue I think just technical is that from what I understand that where the legal trail ends, there's a bit of Cal Hemingway's land that's a vast trail that connects over to the border with angels. And so that piece has to be part of this connector agreement if we do yes. it. Yeah. So that's right. I mean, I think Cumberbatch's goal is to have a connector, but both landowners, you know, are coming from different places too. And I, I certainly, you know, I can see where the angels would be coming from as far as yes, we'll go year to year, but maybe not do something in perpetuity. Yeah, I, I can absolutely see that being a positive or a negative on a land, on a the, the price of a piece of land. I mean, some people would say that's great, I love it, and some people would say I won't buy a piece of land right. with that well, with that restriction. Right away, Alan. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Unless we've got some other discussion, we can move on. Well, what what are your thoughts for next steps then, Gary? Well, have Mariah send Cal a, a brief description or, or a lengthy description of, of what we've discussed and an offer that we're willing to negotiate on a, a, a through trail somehow. And I think John S. Maria said what Cal has said is, is he'd like us to discontinue the legal trail. Yeah. And if he, sets his heels on that, then we're going to have to think about it, I guess. And if he doesn't, if he said, well, maybe I, it would be okay if we just add on to it so we, we cause people to not trespass with a, with a private trail, maybe that would work. But Are you making a counteroffer? I'm just trying to help your boot. Yeah. What's the counteroffer exactly? Well, the counteroffer is... Keep the legal trail yeah. open and then just add on to it. Yeah. And and I suspect he'll probably say no to that, but I, I don't know. And then I think that you also had wanted to discuss how trail usage from here on out for this trail season. That was the other topic for the trails. So as of May 30th, I think it was, it said on the poster, uh, the posted signs on the legal trails. Um, no one is supposed to walk on the legal trails until then, from from whenever it was in March or whenever till then. We're walking only without time limitation. There's no time limitation on that. We we didn't want people to walk on the trails during mud season. Well, well there's there's no all it says on the trails is is walking only. That's all it says. It says um, they're closed right now. 
No, well, I don't know. My end, it says it says the walking walk legal trails under review, walking only. Hmm. Anyway, that's what they've said for the last year. Well, right, that's the old old sign. <clears throat> I, oh, maybe Brenda didn't get over there and put one up. Oh, well, maybe. But anyway, as of the thirtieth of May, we're going to we're going to allow walkers at least on the legal trails. So I guess what Mariah was saying, we got to figure out whether we want just plain walkers or, or pogo sticks or whatever. And I guess I would just say, how about let's go with walkers? I guess I'd go with that too. Yeah. Just pedestrian only. Yeah, pedestrian. And if they come to a tree across the trail or some other, other obstruction, they're going to have to scale it or go around it as long as they can stay within the three rod right of way. Steal it. Stay in the right of way. So you said they'd have to steal it. No. Stay in the right of way. Yeah. Yeah. Scale it, yeah. Scale it. Okay. Um, and I know the crossroad, I haven't been down the crossroad this spring, but there's, there was a bunch of trees across it, and you can either go over them or under them and stay on the crossroad itself. Um, and, and so I guess that would be, I don't know if you want to make that a resolute or, or a motion or um, explain, have it in a minute. I'll, I'll make a motion that we just limit legal trail usage to pedestrian traffic for how long till we bring it up again well till yeah or or next march or something like that okay till next or to further notice i don't know which yeah one. till further notice yeah yeah i second that all right all in favor of that motion please say aye 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 all right, so I'll, I can contact Here. them and have her make up or make sure that they're posted as walking only or pedestrian only. Gary and Mike and Mariah, what's what's the definition of an event? Like what? Where? Where's that line when you all of a sudden beer. become an event? Do you gotta have beer? Yeah, isn't it a certain? I, think it, I don't There's know. A, I a liquor say, license. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think you'd have to have it planned. You'd have to have it announced. You'd have to have it publicized, organized somehow. I don't know. Can you Google but that? What, what was what was our rule on events? You know, like if the oh, ranger, somebody, even on uh, even on on class four roads, what's is there a? Are they said, supposed to give us notice? We said no organized events. Um, the legal trails. I don't know if we ever said anything about class four, did we? No. Not that I know of. Because that would unload the horse girl if we did not. Yeah, no, what I was getting at was that at some point, I think the select board needs to come up with a a policy as far as sort of what we did in, in Cal Hemingway and Karen Blow's example of mm -hmm. if a landowner, you know, is okay with an event essentially on a legal trail that's on their property, that would be okay as long as say, you know, they do A, B, and C, like get in touch with the select board and yeah. um, I think just be Idea. Just because it's their land, so we should draw something up along those lines. But it always would require landowner approval. Well, sort of like our our little permit. To, if you're going to do work, on, if you as a citizen of a, of a property owner are going to do work on a class four road, we want them to notify us of that work. Yeah, but what a what if um, Cal Hemingway says it's all right to have a uh, 500 horses on his trail and Timmy don't want no horses? Well, then they can't go there. Okay. Or not on the Tim's land. Right. I mean, yeah, I like think that's the that's the thing is it's it's landowner by landowner. So if if just one landowner says no, no, I don't want this, then that's that's the end of that, and you have to find a workaround. 
And if they had some sort of a, a paper to fill out that came to the select board, then we could make sure that the landowners had both signed yeah. off on it or, or all three or however many there are. Yeah. At least we'd be notified of it. So Mariah yeah. can get on that too. Because <laughs> that, right. that involves some of those, those issues about, you know, what rights landowners have to let people use their land. Right. Even if even if it's a legal trail. Okay. Thank you, John. You always have good ideas. And John, what was I thinking? One more thing for John. Well, I, I guess, oh yeah, on, on Mike Hebb, I don't know if, if they have that sort of, you know, if there's some sort of, something becomes an event on one of, you know, Mike Hebb's trails. Does it does it rise to a you know a higher bar? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head about events, uh, but it's a good question. I mean, I mean, is an event like twelve people? I mean, that's what I was. I know we came up with a number, but I can't remember what yeah. it was. Because you imagine, you can imagine there's certain times where you you know. In the spring, what is that one trail they have uh, the certain flower on it, right? Um, probably pretty attractive, and you could get groups like a trillium. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Thanks, thank you, Jonathan. Oh, well, thank you, Jonathan. Good work. Thank you, Jonathan. No problem. Well, we're going to move on, and we're going to insert paper stride. And Bryce Stride, I assume your name is Stride. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just for Mariah's purposes, they're sitting here. I never was able to get to Mariah, like you told me to. Okay. Never had time. Anyway, they're here and they can state what they're here for. Okay. Um, it's just been a brewing conflict between my son and um, Mike Barnaby at the transfer station. Um, Bryce works for Side Run. You can try to Solomar Horse Farm, top of the Stratford Road, and I don't know if there was a pre-existing conflict between her and Mike, but it seemed to have gone to Bryce. Um, you know, if he he does her trash, if he has a large load, he goes to South Royalton Transfer Station um recently he had two bags that he brought down to the transfer station and apparently there was some uh pushing well not no contact this time but there was just he wouldn't allow him to throw the bags into the compactor without because of personal matters of his own um and then i apparently was excused uh uh accused of not paying for trash um myself and it's just you know before it gets out of hand and needs to become physical um again more you know more physical i just want to bring it to a head and you know find a resolution to it um you know every time i've gone down there it seems like i get an education in recycling and you know i've i try to Tried to be nice to him and say, hi, how you doing? You know, sorry your father died, stuff like that. But, you know, lately it's just, you know, what can you find wrong for the little bit of trash that you throw in the recycle bin or, you know, something of that nature. <clears throat> mainly it's just, you know, the, the conflict that's between Bryce and him that concerns me. And, and now he, you know, Mike talks to our neighbors and then our neighbors yell at Bryce as well. And then we just don't need that. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know what to do. About you. Yes. Talk to Mike and see. I mean, somebody in a public. I mean, he's he's working a, with a, a public workspace. Right. He's working with the public. He needs to have a different attitude to work with the public. Mm 
Um, I try to go around the situation from the last time I was in this room. I didn't come, I didn't go to Tumbridge Transfer Station. I went to South Burlington for everything. It was just this one instance where I didn't or couldn't fit it all into the one horse trailer that we have. And I was not going back to South Burlington for two bags of trash. Technically was big pieces of wet cardboard, which at the time I could not uh, cut down into back trash bag size. Um, so you put just this kind of unbagged cardboard into the bag cardboard uh, compactor. Or was, it, was it in a bag or was it not in a I, bag? I we got we got a pack we got a package in the mail and it was a big big box big cardboard box. Yeah, but you put it. In it box. was it was outside in the rain. It got wet. I had to cut it up because I was told once before by uh, well that dump as well. If wet, if cardboard's wet, it's considered trash, not recycling. So yep. I cut it down to trash bag size, which is a large contractor bag. Behind. Yeah, and I got only two bags worth, and that, and that's one that, the one instance where I went to Tumbridge, which was last weekend. I think. No, last Wednesday. No, last weekend. Weekend last weekend. Uh, yes. I forgot. <clears throat> So you had two contractor sized bags of wet cardboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I got my ticket that day from Lois. Lois told me that she could talk to someone if she needs to to confirm. Um, and I was approached by Mike that day. And he also approached me when I was trying to leave to the truck, my dad's truck his old truck at the time and he claimed that I didn't pay but I don't think he saw me pay because my back was turned and he was talking talking to me while I was putting the two tickets in the uh, bucket mm -hmm. and I went to the dump before my father went to the dump with the same vehicle well yes yeah. Already set off and then see me drive in or see the truck drive same, back in. Same truck. Yeah. I don't I didn't say a word to him. I threw my recycling in, I threw the trash in at the same time of turn. I put the tickets in the bucket. I have a proper amount, not an oversized load. Yep. So okay. Um, and I I did talk to Mike, like I told you, like, um, mm -hmm. and, and I just he has a different story. And I'm not going to recall his story here because I don't want to get it wrong. So, okay. Um, I guess um, for, someone's going to have to talk to Mike, and I, I don't know how to resolve it. Do you ever do mediation? I, I, <laughs> no, I, I, professionally, I don't. Do that. Yeah. yeah. John, uh, John O'Brien, do you have any? Ideas. Well, the governor of Model League of Cities and Towns would have advice. Yeah, they might. Um, you know, it's like you said, Gary. I mean, I think that there's always going to be two sides to the story, and and but they're, you know, I, it just seems to be escalating, and so, you know, I don't, I don't know what, what the resolution would be i mean i think as much as possible for paper and bryce to you know use the south royalton dump um or you know we can work out some sort of situation where there you know one of us is there their witnesses or something just so things don't escalate escalate when they're you know if you guys are there alone with mike I don't know, you know, how we work that out, but it just seems like it's it's a kind of dangerous, toxic situation. Yeah. yeah. It could be possible where I drive a truck and someone's in the back seat. Like I talk to Lois a lot and she gives me the ideas, but um someone could be if they had free time on the weekend, the next time we go have too much trash, which 
I don't know when that's going to be, but someone could sit in the back seat and observe. He normally only comes or approaches me when someone else is there. Uh, when I raise my voice, he backs off because someone else was there. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we could figure out a substitute, maybe, you know, Rod or somebody could come in on a certain day or even for a certain amount of hours if you guys have flexibility to bring your trash, you know, early or late. That's okay, except for the fact that it's too bad to have to coordinate with everybody to make to triangulate to try we, to. We, I don't go to the dump every weekend. I don't go to the dump every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. we, we have. Uh, Yes, who, who are the boys and and you know just you know i just can't get to the dump every saturday or you know yeah so we have probably four or five trash cans that we use for recycling one large trash can for trash um you know when it gets about that you know it's almost a truckload when we do bill but mm -hmm. um lately it's just only been like four four cans and of recycling and then which I sort through before we bring it down. So there's no plastic bags, there's no dirty like uh, lettuce packages, you know, yeah. and uh, it's just not a fun thing to do, so. All right, the only thing I can promise is we'll work on it. Okay. And hopefully we'll come to a resolution, in my opinion, so you can go anytime you want. Okay. And not be harassed. Right. Did you happen to find out if he holds the tickets or tickets of trash? You know, what happens to the tickets? I don't know. <laughs> no. I so don't. where does he go with them? I, I assume he throws them away but because they're only single-use tickets. And so right. we, we don't recycle them. Right. right. And most people rip is off. Right, is he right now how many tickets come in in a day? I don't know that. He could. So the ticket is just the confirm you have a dump ticket for that point. That yeah. Doesn't mean anything beyond that. No, no, it's supposed to be per bag. I mean, well, if you got a three dollar ticket where there's a whole bunch of threes or two dollars or one dollars or whatever, you're supposed to put the appropriate amount in. So it's it's very seldom that anybody ever takes in thirty dollars worth of garbage. They usually take in three dollars or six or nine or twelve or something. Right. And so they would rip those little pieces off. So you, you wouldn't get a whole ticket in there often. Right. So when I went, it was one full strip and the whole center section of one of those tickets. Yeah. And so it was probably in the number sequence of this. Right. Down to the bottom. Well, we should be able to figure that out. It would be in the bucket. Yeah, unless he's already tossed it into the it's, it's already thrown away. Okay. We'll look into that. <clears throat> I mean, it used to be before COVID, you would hand him a ticket. Hand, hand. He would wreck off the appropriate amount. Right. But because of the separation of the COVID, you had to right. not have any contact. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully we'll get a resolution. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good night. has an employee assistance program. So, okay. Well, our able-bodied assistant will look into that. He's too busy eating chips. <laughs> well, good evening. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Fred, are you a mediator? So no, I may have misunderstood the agenda, but I saw a tax sale. Oh, that's coming right up at seven o'clock. Oh, oh yeah, what's going on here? What's the matter with it? It's writing all this stuff and saying reflashing and it's winking at you, my 25 friend. seconds remaining. I don't know. Well, the building goes up in flames. Okay. No. We'll wait for 25 seconds, see what happens. Have you been reflashed lately? Here we go. Yeah. You did it. Yeah. Good job. Um, you know, oh. Honey, what do you need me to get?
Mariah, are you there? I sure am. What's going on? <laughs> I wish I knew. I wish I could go down, but I cannot because I have two children. Um, I am going to look up Mike's cell phone number and call IT. <laughs> I just disappeared all of a sudden. Yeah, they're probably down there like scrambling. Let's see. Oh, that's not a cell phone number. Hmm. Do you know what Mike's cell phone number is? Um, is it in the Tembridge quarterly? It might be. Let me look.
<clears throat> oh, I found it. It's on the website. His cell phone's on the website? Yeah. <laughs> There's no service in downtown Tunbridge. Hello, what is going on over there? <laughs> okay. I'm, I have all the faith in Mike. I know he can do it. It shouldn't have updated it because I had I updated it earlier at work so that it wouldn't do this tonight. But you know what? That happens. Okay. Okay, he's doing it. Well, you I always just go on the Tumbridge website and go under the select board and click the link. Look at that guy. Yep, yep, perfect. Yes, I, I love it, I love it. <laughs> I bet so too. And you're in the phone to the computer. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> nice job, Mike. Yeah. Is it still recording? Sure is. Been recording the whole time. Really? I heard you heard you talking. You oh, got, no, I didn't. We got Fred on tape. It was recording me. Yeah. Yeah, talking about your spare tire and <laughs> <laughs> in your new business <laughs> it's going to be worldwide tomorrow friend going to get my toll free number <laughs> yeah it's going to slip that in friends tires oh, so on. don't I push think... any more buttons okay oh yeah I won't I won't push any buttons I think I dropped the ball on account of almost passing away from my sickness so I didn't include Joe Paquin on this email so he probably isn't showing up tonight, but he had just, all he wanted was approval to continue on the tax sale process. Okay, I think we can do that. We can do that. That was all he was looking for, yeah. I make a motion we approve Joe Paquin, the delinquent tax collector, to continue on his tax sale. Quest. 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 Yeah. Quest. The collector of delinquent taxes. Yeah. He's oh. not he's not delinquent himself. The taxes are delinquent. Oh. Delinquent tax collector. <laughs> Still got it wrong. Tax collector delinquent? No, the collector of delinquent taxes. Oh, collector. The taxes delinquent. are delinquent, not Joe. Okay. No, I can brush it up. Oh yeah. It'll be a really nice motion. All right, all in favor of Mike's motion, no matter what he said, say hi. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, 
And, and is he still looking for June sometime or something for the tax? I, I think so. Yeah, because the deadline for abatements has passed now. So we only had those three abatements that we did. And so now uh, the process continues. So, yes, I think he was looking for June. OK, good. All right, so we'll check that off the list. So Joe Pickland is definitely not arriving tonight. Yes. Correct. Correct. So Fred, have it, have it in a minute that Fred is disappointed. I will. I'm sorry, Fred. All right, Mariah, feel better. I, I feel so much better. Thank you. I was very unwell for a moment. Oh, she probably put too many salt and vinegar potato chips yeah. in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> You got eaten with him. You got yeah. dipped with them. Yeah, yeah. Cream cheese is good. All right. What do you know about library cleaning, Mariah? Uh, first page in your packet is an email from Todd Tyson. That was the email he sent Mariah Lawrence. Uh, I highlighted the total coming in at three thousand thirty-five dollars. Yep. That was the only bid Mariah was able to get. So if you love it. I love it. I love it too. Make a nice motion. I make a motion that um, we hire Todd uh, Tyson to do the exterior painting for the Tunbridge Public Library for a cost of $3,035. I second that motion. All right. All in favor of Todd Tyson doing the painting on the library, please say aye. 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 All right. Mariah's so well trained. She's coughing into her elbow at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have All set right. a good example for Davis so he doesn't do this. Yeah. Yeah. Who would you learn that from? <laughs> All right. Next is medical equipment. Does that have something to do with Jody? Yeah. So Judy Tucker stopped in the other day and said, I don't know if you guys have driven by the barn, but out behind the barn is a hospital's worth of medical equipment that we have just been storing in the barn. And Pat is looking mm -hmm. to get rid of it. And awesome. Judy thinks that the, the barn right across from my house. Oh. Oh. Um, and Judy thinks that uh, it's a very good thing for the town to have and that uh, we should be no. grabbing, hold on. I see. Thank you. I see you. So that we should get some of it anyways, so that we can have it Jody can have it as a thing to offer to townspeople if they need it. What are your thoughts on this? Where should we store it? We, I mean, we have plenty of room in the basement, but are you all for that? What kind of equipment is it? How much? Equipment? Oh, there's walkers, there's scooters, there's shower chairs, there's um, like the walkers with the brakes, there's crutches uh commodes like a ton of stuff stuff that people would need for like hip replacement oh, I, I, broken leg um like end of life care things like that I'm, I'm just on the table. no you can't sit on please 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 do you think from your knowledge that the, the equipment would fit in a basement of the town clerk's office yeah. yeah, and we don't hold on. Hold on. Yeah. So we'll be able to move in the basement of the town's clerk's office. Yeah. Um, and we don't have to, I mean, and you don't have to take it all. Like if if you want some, like we could have Jody come down and pick out, you know, three of each thing or something that she wants just to be able to have to offer it. And she could curate it. See what she thinks she wants, and maybe right. make a list, and then then we'd have a little more idea how big a how big a thing we're talking about. 
Is there a time limit on when we have to accept this and move it or? I don't think so. It's been in the barn for 50 years. I don't think it's going anywhere. Okay, it's just well, out behind the barn now. Well, could you then do what Mike said and contact Jody? Yeah. And just have her take a peek at it and yeah. And have her kind of decide whether she wants three of one thing or 10 of one thing or whatever. Yeah. And she had messaged me too and said that she definitely was interested, but wanted to coordinate where we thought we could store it and that type of thing. So like she's on board with wanting some of it, but I'll just tell her that she should take a look and see, you know, give you a list of what she wants from it. And then we can move it downstairs. Sure. The and the only thing long-term I was thinking of is if we have this, this, Re rehabbed her or updated, updated with uh, um, uh, insulation and stuff. We don't want to have the whole basement plumbed up and stuff. Then we just got to move out. So we probably ought to do what Mike said and, and not take it all, but take what we think we can use. Hmm. Yeah, I get it. Davis wants me to show you his favorite black truck he just got. That's sweet. Show us Very the front. Sweet. And I want to show you how the front end. Oh, and these open. Watch. And the doors open. Watch. Says, watch. 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 I'll, I'm helping you. You're watching. <laughs> nice. All right, okay. dude. Those are pretty cool. I hope, I hope he's getting his PDL. Yeah. <laughs> we went to the we went to the thrift store the other day up in Randolph and you know, everything up there is wicked cheap, like 25 cents, 50 cents. I got like a couple different clothes for Dove, a couple things for him. Would have cost me $2 maybe. Then Davis comes out with this truck, cost $5. <laughs> I said, this is the most expensive thing I've bought today. But, you know, it's okay. Gotta have it. Had to have it, yep. <laughs> we had to have it. Yep, yeah, we had to have it. <laughs> Why? Because you liked it. <laughs> yeah, and it was it's cheaper. It's cheaper than a four-wheel drive Freightliner. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so is this is this medical equipment undercover or is it just outside? It's all it's all um metal or like plastic. Um, so it's not gonna get hurt from the rain. It honestly was good that it was put outside because some of it was dusty and stuff but it's all in decent shape it's not like my grandmother just used a walker from there the other day and stuff so it's definitely it's it's in good shape useful somebody was just over there getting something to it's something the funeral home used to do um and they don't really do it anymore back when they were the ambulance red marks and cheese Maybe Fred Pond could pedal some with his wheelbarrows off his porch. Get some of those walkers with little brakes on it, and you could mount it to your wheelbarrow handles. So there's an organization in Montpelier who manages the old barn up there. Yeah. I'm familiar with the organization. Uh, yeah. Was that a no? Yeah. I mean, it brings up an interesting topic, which is what does municipal timberage have for, for just sort of general storage space? I know, you know, the town garage were so tight over there. We don't have a lot of storage space, do we? We don't. Thank you, Craig. Um, to be noted, Craig. Why does the town need storage space? Well, for stuff like that. But in general. How much stuff like that? Yeah. Not a lot. Because we don't have the space to store it. Probably a good idea. Well, I was just thinking Janet mentioned last two weeks ago about the balcony in the town hall. There's a bunch of junk up there. Oh, uh, no, I need to go. And what I think, is it good junk? Well, I don't know. I think it's just a catch all. I mean, when, when there's no other place to right. put stuff, they right. put it in places like that. So I don't know as I want our basement down here to be just a catch all. Right. But that might be something that. You, we could almost, you know, in a Tumbridge quarterly or something, ask people in Tumbridge if they have, you know, a dry storage space they aren't using. Right. That we could, we we would love love to, uh, <clears throat> you know. If you're talking to the king of catch-all. Yeah. And I know how that yeah. works. 
Yeah. Well, like, for instance, Kay Jorgensen has um, her garage, the, the first garage that they had years ago, and she has a bunch of historical society stuff in that. Um, and that's a nice dry space. <clears throat> but I don't know if she wants a whole bunch more stuff. But... Right. And number number 29 takes up some space too. That's a different building altogether. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, but there's got to be somebody around with some space, but we just, I, I think we just can't get carried away with it and right. take a bunch of stuff that we really don't need. Right. No. That's why I thought we ought to have Jody look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Wants one of each or something. Yeah. <clears throat> Clayton Butterfield does that in Randolph and he's got two barns full of wheelchairs and walkers and really? oh yeah and is it just for Randolph people Mike or is it what, oh, what anybody anybody that calls him right so we might not even he's been doing it for years and years huh. and he's actually he's, he's been trying to look for somebody else to do it right because he's 90 something now Huh. Well, and, uh, but nobody else wants to do it. Hmm. <clears throat> well, I'll make a note for the Tumbridge Corps at least. Yeah. Well, I guess we're moving on to other business. Mm -hmm. And I see here there's an email from Chris Bump, Mariah. Oh, yeah, boy. so those are just all the ones that I had oh, forwarded yeah. you guys anyways about the Stratford Road slope slide. Yeah. Cool stack. Yeah. yeah, so you guys have read these already or had them sent to you, but I just thought I would print them off if you wanted a paper oh. copy. It's turning into a $5 million project. Yeah. I haven't seen these before. Now, I, don't what, know I missed it. What dam are they talking about? They want to yank out. The old mill dam. That, remember when mill we looked at it? Or up the big thing? It shouldn't. Okay. Because the old mill dam is pretty decrepit anyway. It's, it's from half or two thirds gone now. It's just over the years busted apart and stuff. Okay. And I know the state isn't an ANR or somebody. Or maybe it's fish and wildlife or somebody really wants to see all the dams in the state taken out because then the fish can walk along freely on the bottom. Really? Yeah. So I, I just assume that well Rodney said also or the this fish morning, gonna hide and have a flood. Under a rock. Okay. But that was one of the things that Rodney told me this morning when I talked to him was that that what this document I guess says is that maybe because the state wants us to fix it so that it withstands another Irene. And also somewhere in here it said maybe they could yank the dam and right. fix the slope at the same time right. or something yeah. like that. So that's why they're looking at more funding because it was, what was it, $138,000? Maybe an opportunity to do both projects at once. Right. And so worst case scenario is we're gonna have to buck up and just put some real coarse stone in there for the time being until, because I can just imagine this, this process taken until next year until we can do it and we don't want our road to fall into the river. <clears throat> anyway, we have copies of this and I assume John has a copy on his computer so we can read it over and Talk more about it next meeting. Yep. And then I just had two things for other business. Um, there's two liquor licenses that need approval. They're on the table there. One of them is for Brockle Bank. They have an event at the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. And one of them is for um, a wedding at Lango's Farm. So I just need your permission to approve those. And then we'll be all set for the liquor licenses. And make a motion we give Raya permission to approve the two liquor license applications. Do 
I second that. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. And then my last thing was I met with Marianne today and we were approved for, oh, not that one. I met with Marianne today and with the ARPA stuff that you guys approved moving forward for the insulation and weatherization of the town offices and the weatherization of some of the town hall and then the electrical update, how do you want to move forward with that? Because we're obviously going to need some sort of point person to coordinate all that. Do you want that to be one of you? Do you want that to be me? What, what, how do you envision that in going forward? So this is going to be a long process, isn't it? because we're gonna to have to ask for bids and then, then anybody that's any good isn't gonna be able to do it this year. So they're probably gonna work in the next year. <clears throat> Are you up to doing something like that, Mariah? Yeah, that's fine. I just needed to, it wasn't originally on my radar. So I just need to know if that's something that you want me to take on. And then obviously I think- Yeah, that, you're so That's me, yeah. Obviously, I think that once we pick a contractor to do the work, like the weatherization, mm -hmm. they'll have, you know, a lead person and I really won't have to do much, but it'll just be me liaisoning with them between when they're doing the basement, when they're doing the upstairs, when we need to move out, that type of thing. So yeah, I don't mind doing it. I will type up a bid request and I'll bring it to the next meeting when you guys can approve that. Okay, well, I think that's a good idea because you would be a good liaison between whoever does the work or whatever and the select board since you're talking with us anyway. Okay with that? Yeah, if you discover it's going to be too much, then let us know. <laughs> and, you know, I think. There's a certain amount of you can delegate back to us, Mariah, too. When you know, yeah, if we're, yeah, well, we're that's the thing. Around. Yeah, as I don't mind being like, you know, these are this is what I need you guys to help me with, and then telling, you know, here's your homework for the week. But I think for the most part, we'll work together as a team. I'll just type up, you know, bids, you'll select who's doing it, and then I'll talk to the person and set up a, a time for it. Okay. Or a team. That's what she said. The dream team, some say, you know. Um, Who said that? Um, do we need to make a motion that Mariah is? Oh, is our, our, I make a motion that Mariah will be clerk of the works on the town hall update. <laughs> and town office as well. And town office as well. That's going to be a nice motion, Mike, when she gets done with it. I second that. Yeah. All right. All in favor of having Mariah being smart. Aye. 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 Any other business? Too bad you missed the spicy cheese. I was going to ask you, is that pepper jack? Yes, or how? Yeah. Looks so good. It is. I bet you can taste it from your house. I can, yeah. Mommy, look at the truck. If we're done with the meeting, I got a folder of Kelsey Mountain Cemetery stuff. And I got a copy for your father-in-law. And I got a copy that you can shove in the vault or something. Yes, thank you. I would love to do that. OK. Yes, thank you. Did you inquire Memorial Day wreath? Did I what? Inquire Memorial Day wreath? No, I, I'm not. I'm not doing a Memorial Day reading. Are you 
needing somebody to do one? I sent you an email the other day that I volunteered your father-in-law to get a wreath for yeah. the morning today. Oh, wreath, oh. wreath, wreath, wreath. Okay. I will I will follow up with him on the wreath. I thought you meant a, a reading. I was going to stand there and read something. And I said, no, thank you. <laughs> She's shy. Yes. A wreath. Wreath. Okay. Uh, yeah, got it. I'm putting this folder right here. Okay. I want mean, this is the Ember Toucher. Mm -hmm. So do we have a box of little flags somewhere that we hand out on Memorial Day? Downstairs, there's a whole bunch of flags. This, this um, is another black one. Well, do you want to grab those, Gary? Are you in the parade? You're usually in the parade, right? He's going to be passing out flags. Yeah. Okay, well, they're right downstairs. Perfect. Okay. I can buy that too. All right. And speaking of flags, that's another thing Rodney and the guys are going to do tomorrow is put the flags up. Okay. And we found them. They were in a box that was mislabeled, so I hadn't opened it. And then I was like, what the heck is this? And I opened it up, and then there was all the new flags. So we have some new ones. So don't yep. worry. We, we found them. They'll be up North Umbridge and Tunbridge Village tomorrow. The box was labeled snakes. <laughs> yeah. That's why they were in the cellar. <laughs> All right, any other business? Okay. Silence. Yeah, <laughs> silence is deadly. Okay. Uh, so if, if it's okay with John, Mike and I are gonna look over the warrants and I see minutes there. And then we're gonna go home. <laughs> That's not good. All right. <clears throat> okay with David. Okay with me. Is that okay with you, Davis? Yeah. Yeah. Have Davis run down. I'll give him a ride home in my scout. You want to go for a ride in a scout? I never did that before. You've never done that before? No. Yeah. <laughs> I, never, I never did I that before. I don't. You don't like scouts? Yeah. Every time. I want to doubt it. What, what a scout is, he said. Oh, have to come down and look at it. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to push sure. stop record. Yes, I was just going to say, make sure when we leave this meeting, how about actually right now before we hang up so I can double check that you're gone, I'll go over and click end meeting for all in the Zoom thing. And all then right. so, someone ought to make a motion to end the meeting. For I it. make a motion. I have meeting. that from right there. I second that. All right, all I think say aye. All right. Aye. 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 I need to write. Aye. Thank you for attending. I, I can show you what a puppy one. Okay. You, what do you like? Oops. Look. Match. 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 Match.